Hello and welcome again. In the previous video, we discussed about this group Z and uh, star uh, that when this that here is multiplication modulo n. As uh, we talked about, uh, that this uh, collection here is a group, and also we check when uh, this is cyclic and not cyclic, and how to check if some number here in this uh, collection is a generator or not. So now I'm going to talk about the number of generators. Now let me go back to the example we did in the previous video. So in the previous video we were looking for all the generators of Z54 star and we ended up computing uh, this list which is a list of all generators. So we got six of them here. Now uh, if you haven't watched this vi that the previous video I suggest you go back and watch that again because I was going to make this video will, be, will make more sense if you actually do that. All right. So we want to know exactly how many generators uh, this uh, group has and this is given by this theorem here. So if I have that this group is cyclic, Z and start dot is cyclic, then I can easily compute the number of generators by applying the function phi of Euler twice to that number n here. So I do phi of n, whatever the result comes out of there, I apply phi of that again. And that's going to be the number of generators of my group. So for example, uh, in the uh, computation that we did in the last video. So we saw that Z54 stat has six generators, which are 5, 11, 23, 29, 41, 47. So I can easily compute how many of them are there by doing mm -hmm. phi of phi of 54, which is phi of 18. Now remember, we computed in the last video this phi of 54, which was 18. Now I compute that again, phi of 18. Now to do this computation, remember what you need to do is you factor this 18 here, so it's going to be 2 times 3 squared, that's 19. And if I have the prime decomposition here, I just apply phi to each one of them. Applying phi to each one of them means this is the prime. If you have a prime here, it's the prime minus 1. If it is a power of a prime, I say I write down exactly the same prime and I subtract uh, the prime 3 to the 1 power less than the one that is here. So it's 3 squared minus 3 to the first. So if I do this computation, I get a 6, which is exactly the number of generators of Z star 54, which is what we computed last time. Uh, uh, a good thing to know about the number of generators, if you compute them, and so this will give you like kind of double check that you are actually getting the exact number of generators. So for example, if in this computation we got 5 generators, we know that we made a mistake somewhere because there should be 6 of them. So that's an important fact to know. All right, so now I'll be able to define for you what is the discrete logarithm problem in Z and star. Now remember, we talked about this definition in CP star, which is the discrete logarithm problem in CP star. The discrete logarithm problem here is going to be very similar with few difference. So this is what it says. You are given three pieces of information, one, two, and three. The first piece of information does give you a number n which is either 2 for a power of a prime or twice a power of a prime where the prime number is an odd prime. In the previous one uh, was p. p should be a uh, prime number. But in this case, n has to look like that. The second thing that I have to give you is a generator of z and star. So that's why we were talking about generators. So alpha here is a generator. And they give you another number beta, which is another element of z and star that doesn't have to be necessarily a generator. So three pieces of information they're given to you. And the discrete logarithm problem is computing the discrete log in base alpha of beta. And remember what that means is I find the logarithm in base alpha of beta is the exponent that alpha needs to be equal to beta, which is exactly what it says here. So that is, that is a number x that is between 0 and phi of n minus 1, and I'll explain why it has to be phi of n minus 1 in a second, so that alpha to the x is equal to beta. So that's exactly that we're looking for. We're looking for this exponent x here. Now the reason it has to be phi of n minus 1 is because I'm assuming this alpha is a generator, so I have alpha to the 0, alpha to the first, and it goes all the way up to alpha to the phi of n minus 1. And why is that? Because this collection that is here is made out of relatively primes with n. There are phi of n of them. And this collection has exactly phi of n elements. So that's why uh, the exponent has to be between 0 and phi of minus 1. Okay. 
I hope that that's clear, all this explanation there. So that's a discrete logarithm problem in that group. Okay, let's say we want to compute this by hand now. So we are not doing an CP star here, so we have talking about a little bit more general ends here. They don't have to be primes, but they have to have certain uh, form. So what is the log in base 13 of 47? First of all, I have to check that this guy is actually cyclic, C50 star, so I can apply that definition. So we have to uh, check that it's cyclic and that the alpha is actually a generator. So this number that is here, 13, is actually a generator. So because according to our definition, we will need that to be a generator there. So let's check first that uh, this Z50 uh, star is cyclic. Remember, that only depends on how 50 is written as uh, this composition in prime number. Now, 50 is 2 times 5 squared, and you can easily check that. So, 2 times 5 squared is of the form 2 times p to the k, where p is an odd number. And remember, the theorem we saw last time means that then, exactly, if the n is like this, then that group has to be cyclic, so that is cyclic. So, we check the first part. The second part will be checking that this number is actually a generator, which we also did in the last video. Now, to check that, remember, you have to find phi of 50, because this has to be, this phi of 50 is part of the exponent to which I have to raise uh, this 13 here. So, phi of 50 is 2 times 5 squared, which you already did here at the beginning. Apply the same technique, phi of uh, this composition of prime numbers, distinct prime numbers, just phi distribute, so it's phi of 2 times phi of 5 squared, and phi of 2 is 2 minus 1, and phi of 5 squared is the power of the prime minus uh, a power less than the one that is here, so 5 squared minus 5 to the first power. And if you actually compute that, you get 20, so which is 2 squared times 5. Now the reason I, I uh, already factored this here is because I also need to know what are the prime divisors of phi of 50, because that's how I check that alpha is a prime. Now if this is confusing for you, it means that you have to go and revisit the video where we explain how to check that some elements are generators of the group. So we get that the prime divisors of uh, phi of 50 are, of course, 2 and 5. So the exponents that I need to write down are phi of 50 divided by the prime numbers. Phi of 50 is 20. 20 divided by the first prime is 10. 20 divided by the second prime is 4. So I have to take 13 to these powers, uh, 10 and 4, and double check that those powers, when I take modulo n, in this case, modulo uh, 50 doesn't give me 1. So I'm going to do 13 to the 10 power. That's modulo 50. That gives me a 49. If you go ahead and double check that this is actually the case, that gives you 49, which is not equal to 1. And 13 to the 4 power, which is this exponent here, modulo 50 is 11, which is not equal to 1 either. So if this happens for all the prime divisors of phi of n, then 13 is a generator. Again, I'm doing this a little bit faster because we did uh, these computations in the last video. So if you are confused a little bit, so just go back and uh, check the previous video. So 13 is a generator. So I can go ahead and say, if 13 is a generator of Z50, it means that all the elements of Z50 star are all powers of 13. So it's 13 to the 0, 13 to the 1, up to 13 of, to the 19, and the reason for that is because I have 20 elements here. Number of elements of Z50 is 20. So how do I find the discrete log that I'm looking for? Let me go back here. And so I have to find what power of 13 gives me 47 modulo 50. That's basically what I'm looking for. So I'm going to start taking powers over 13. I'm not going to take the zero power because the zero power doesn't give me um, what I'm looking for. I'm not going to take the first power because it doesn't give me what I'm looking for. So I'm going to start at 13 squared. So what is this 13 squared modulo 50? You can go ahead and double check uh, this uh, division to the remainder is 19. And 13 cubed modulo 50, which is the remainder of 13 cubed divided by 50, that gives me 47. That's exactly the number I was looking for. I wanted to uh, get a power of 13 modulo 50 to be 47. So in this case, what that means is this exponent 3 that is here is the discrete log that I'm looking for. So that's exactly what I wrote here. The log in verse 13 of 47 is 3 in Z50 star, which is very important to say where 
is the discrete log because if you change this group this computation is probably going to change so the context here is important so that's basically the discrete logarithm problem uh, in Zn star so we expanded a little bit our definition so it's defined for a little bit more general groups okay so that's all I have to say about not in this video so what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to talk about a little bit better algorithm to, far, to find discrete logs. This is slightly better of this one. This is exhaustive search, so I have to check all the powers. The, v, the algorithm I'm going to describe to you in the next video is a little bit better. Still, uh, for large numbers, it's not going to be efficient. And that's the point of this whole thing, the discrete logarithm problem. Uh, it is a problem if you want to call it like that in the sense that it is, comp uh, it is really difficult to compute if the numbers, of course, are large uh, numbers. So I'll stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.